Welcome to the Wolverine Tailgate Show. I am Clayton Safey with Chris Ballas and Austin Fox. It is game day in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Wisconsin, 730 on ABC. Uh, Michigan at 1-2, and two, Wisconsin at 1-0, and oh, coming off a couple weeks off due to a coronavirus outbreak. Um, football today, some canceled, but uh, still lots that uh, will be played. Um, and then the Masters as well. So my first question to you guys how much flipping are you doing between the Masters and college football? I know, Austin, you're not too much of a golf guy, but I know, Chris, you're a, a big fan of the sport. I'm going to watch until Indiana gets up about 14 to nothing here and then uh, probably flip over to the Masters and see what's going on there. Sunday's really the big day, right, when everybody has yeah. to tune into the Masters. So uh, it's like the last four minutes of an NBA game. If you get the last nine holes <laughs> in a Masters, man, or a major, then, uh, then you're seeing everything. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'll be watching all college football today. I couldn't care less about golf. I know that's not going to be a popular answer. Uh, it probably has to do with the fact that I'm probably the worst golfer in the world. So <laughs> I've never watched any of the Masters in my life. So all college football for me today. All right. Fair enough. Uh, we're going to get to our questions here from subscribers at thewolverine.com. You can check us out over there. Uh, use the promo code Nike75. You get a year membership for just $75. But we give you a $75 Nike gift card right back. So it's essentially free in my in my mind, especially if you're going to buy some <laughs> Nike gear for somebody for Christmas, uh, then it's basically a, a free exchange there. So let's get to our questions. Dave G24, uh, who do you expect to see starting at defensive end without Quiddy Pay or Aiden Hutchinson? Obviously, Aiden Hutchinson probably out for the rest of the year with a broken leg. Quiddy Pay, uh, doubtful to go tonight. Um I mean, it seems like the obvious answer is Taylor Upshaw, Luigi Villain, and we'll see how they do. They're going to be thrown right into the fire after not getting much playing time, really, their entire careers up until last week. Yeah, no, maybe about it. Aiden Hutchinson's going to be out for at least four months before his leg heals. His dad has confirmed with people we know, so uh, he's done. Quiddy Pay looked like he pulled up lame on a on the pass rush last week, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, this is just, you know, what a disaster of a season, man. Throw the young guys in there. It was an asterisk season anyway and see what they can do. Uh, the odds are against them that they're going to be playing eight games anyway this year, if we're being honest, with games getting canceled all over the place. Um, lucky, frankly, that they're playing Wisconsin tonight, and Wisconsin's going to have a lot of guys opting out. From what we're hearing, Graham Mertz will not be one of them. He's actually – uh, our sources, several sources now have said that he will play tonight. So, um, you know what? Let's see what they can do. It will be Villain and it will be Upshaw. The big question for me is who is it behind them, right? And uh, is David Ojabo going to slide over? I know that he's been playing the Sam, but they're going to be mixing and matching, man. And uh, you know what? What the hell you got to lose at this point? Yeah, it's absolutely going to be Upshaw and Villain. And Clayton and I were talking about this the other day, but – What's happened to the depth at some of these uh, spots on defense for this Michigan team? You look back to that 2016 team and look at the depth they had along the D-line with guys like Rashawn Gary and Chase Winovich coming off the bench behind other guys like Taco Charlton and Chris Wormley. They were loaded at the spot, and now there's a huge drop-off after Payne Hutchinson when you're talking about Upshawn Villain. So it's just disappointing in a lot of ways to see how far this uh, the, the talent has dropped off over the last few years for this team. And I was watching yeah. Iowa, Minnesota, and their defensive line was big. Uh, and it was unbelievable how, how Michigan's, frankly, looks like a JV line compared to that. You know, they need to – I'm not going to blame strength and conditioning. I think it's, you know, bodies and a mindset here. We want to be smaller, quicker, faster, whatever. But, man, Iowa was bullying Minnesota up front on Friday night. And I'm thinking Michigan needs a big, strong defensive line. And uh, they need to be able to get to the quarterback guys if they're going to play the kind of defense that Don Brown wants to, and they're not doing it right now. Yeah, and it's an early, like you said, an already struggling defensive line that hasn't you know, got a sack in two games. First time that's happened for a Michigan team since 07, uh, and they're missing their two top guys, and really two guys that were seen as uh, the two top players on the team coming into the year. Um, switching over to offense, we got a question from 2HF540B. Uh, will the running back rotation start to get pared down? Uh, seems like it's a challenge for guys to get loose when they each get so many few or so few carries. I mean, guys, we've been talking about it now since the opener. Even at some point, you gotta you gotta get it down to one or two guys. Um, you know, Chris, I know you you've heard that maybe they're starting to to do that. Um, so I guess talk about that a little bit. You know, I'm we talked about it a few times over the last couple of weeks. In my opinion, you have to do it. It's got to be two, and then you you go with the hot hands. 
uh, from there. You know, mix in maybe Charbonnet early on in the game and then see who has the hot hand. Whoever had the best week of practice should be the number one guy, and he should give it an opportunity, right, to get into a rhythm and to kind of feel his way around. It's not fair to these kids to give them, for example, one carry. You go for 70 yards, and then you get three carries the rest of the game, like uh, Zach Charbonnet at Minnesota, and that wasn't his fault. One of those plays was an absolute disaster where he gets the ball on a read option, and there were six defenders waiting for him. So they got to do a better job of that, and we're hearing that. I think, Chris Evans, you're going to see more in the slot less at running back, in my opinion. Um, I think Charbonnet and Haskins, to be honest with you, will be getting a lot of the carries tonight against uh, Wisconsin, and I think you'll see Blake Corum in situations, hopefully uh, in some pass situations and, and getting the ball on the, him, getting him the ball on the outside. I think that kid is uh, dynamic, So, but it's only fair to these kids. Hassan Haskins is averaging, what, 7.9 yards per carry, I believe, and that's insane. Yep. And it's time to, you know, it's time fair. It's it's fair to these kids to give them an opportunity here, and I think you're going to see that happen starting tonight. Yeah, if a kid produces consistently, you have to reward them, and that really hasn't been the case with this this rotation. That seems like it's just basically random at times. Haskins has been the most or the best back in most people's opinion, and yet he's not getting the majority of the carries. Blake Corum deserves a bigger shot as well. We saw the speed he possesses in that Michigan State game, so it would be good if they got this rotation a little bit tighter, but it's all for not if the offensive line doesn't step up either. These guys cannot run between the tackles. We've seen it the last two weeks. They constantly have guys in their face as soon as they get the ball. So it's crucial the, that the offensive line steps up as well if Michigan wants to get at least somewhat of a consistent running game going here over the next few weeks. Back to you know some of the rotations. You know, Running back seems to be one of the spots where they're, all right, they're going to play less guys. Jim Harbaugh talked about this week on his radio show how they're going to start getting more guys in at a lot of other positions. Uh, LB3490 is wondering how many new faces uh, do we expect on the field today? Two, four, eight? Is it going to be uh, a drastic difference? Um, I think certainly in the defensive line, it's going to be you know a pretty heavy rotation. Um, at the same time, like Austin, you mentioned, I mean, who's really behind some of these guys? So it's going to be interesting to see what they do, what kind of philosophy they go with, because they now have their second loss. I mean, you're virtually out of the Big Ten race. Not that, you know, they've looked like a Big Ten championship contender, um, you know, regardless. But um, what do you guys expect, I guess, out of this big sort of rotation? It's not going to be an overhaul. And, and Jim Harbaugh said it's going to be three plays here. If you do three, get, do well in three plays, you get three more and things like that. But uh, flat out, they still want to win this game. I, they're in desperation mode now. And, and they uh, we've heard that talk from the building. We've heard it before, obviously. But they understand that any chance for a decent season, a great season or even a good season, frankly, is out the window at this point when you lose to crappy teams. But um, it's it, this is their opportunity. So they're going to – I think they'll get – They'll go with the guys that they're most comfortable with for the majority of it. I think you'll see, still see Chris Hinton in there. I still think you'll see Carlo Kemp in there and guys like that. But you, you will see other guys get opportunities. He mentioned Mozzie Smith. Uh, you know, this is a kid that we had banked on being a big part of the run defense because he's big and physical and strong. Uh, clearly, there's something there where he's not getting playing time. So, but we will see more guys mixed in. You'll see Chris Jenkins. We saw David Ojabo, for example, for a handful of snaps, right, against Indiana, I think. And uh, probably Chris Jenkins, true freshman. You'll see maybe a little bit of Jess Spade in there. But they're going to find guys who want to play, man. And that's what they need to do because there are too many guys. I know Jim Harbaugh talks about these guys playing hard and stuff like that. And uh, there are too many guys on both sides of the ball that – Look like they're playing hard, but are, also look like they're going through the motions. You need a guy that's going to fight and, and for you on every play, and, and we haven't seen that. Yeah, another guy who got his first action ever at Michigan last week, late in the game at least, was Gabe Newberg, a retro freshman defensive end. So I think he's another possibility you could throw into the mix. If younger players deserve a shot, it's at cornerback. I don't think there's any question about it. Vincent Gray just hasn't gotten the job done. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of Jalen Perry. We saw him some in that second half against Michigan State two weeks ago. DJ Turner, if he's healthy, the redshirt freshman there. So, again, I still think it'll be gray and green the majority of the game at the spot. But don't be surprised to see some of the guys I just mentioned, along with Sammy Faustin, potentially mixed in at that corner spot as well. Hey, Clay, wasn't Elvin the one that was talking about how great the secondary was going to be this year? I didn't want to bring it up, but I, I mean... <laughs> We all get wrong every now and then, Alvin. It's all right. Yeah. 
So, People were excited know. about this group after that uh, opener at Minnesota. <laughs> really? I don't know. Excited? I think they were. They. I thought. I think they felt okay about it. You know. Now we understand that Minnesota is absolute garbage, and <laughs> it's unbelievable. What uh, man? Then that's why you can't put too much stock in an opener either way, right? You need a few games to really understand what the landscape is in the Big Ten, and and right now, uh, Minnesota's an absolute dog. And on that point. Um, how good is Wisconsin? I mean, going shifting over to actually what Wisconsin's going to be. I mean, we don't really know. They've been off two weeks. They're going to have guys out. Um, so at the same time, you know, we don't know exactly what Wisconsin team is going to actually take the field tonight at the big house. And that'll make it interesting. Um, they obviously dominated Illinois 45 to seven in the opener. Graham Mertz looked really good. And uh, as you mentioned, it sounds like he's going to give it a go tonight after missing exactly 21 days uh, with the coronavirus stringent protocols that the Big Ten has. Uh, this is tying right in with that secondary talk. Cookie Monster uh, is wondering, who do we sick Dax Hill on? And I'm thinking about it. It's like, well, I mean, you, I mean, they have a couple decent receivers on one of those maybe, but they have a good tight end and Michigan struggled to – I mean, can we just put – you know, could they get like four Dax Hills and just let them play every position in the secondary? They used to do that. Uh, here at Michigan and now you got guys that can't find the ball and you've got guys that are playing with terrible technique and you know and, and to be fair uh, this is the first year that they've really struggled at that position since Jim Harbaugh's been there they've had good players with great hips Jordan Lewis's Levert Hill played good ball at points uh, Ambry Tom and you're missing Ambry Thomas that changed the entire makeup of your secondary and what you could do if you had two cover guys like Dax Hill and Ambry Thomas back there, that changes everything. But right now you don't, and uh, that's the problem. So, But it's going to be – they're going to have to mix it up and, and throw some more zone in there. The interesting quote, obviously, last week was by Don Brown. I don't want to become comfortable doing something I'm not comfortable with or whatever. So indicates that he doesn't want to change. But if you don't have the personnel to do it, man, and you're tipping your, your hand, which is what we continue to hear, that – Defenses know when they're coming, where they're coming from, and it sure looks like it, guys, the last couple of weeks. Then, uh, you know, it's out there. The secret's out what to do against the Don Brown defense. So hopefully we see some them mix it up a little bit, uh, throw a few different looks at them, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, you just look at some of the outstanding corners Michigan has had over the last 25 years or so, guys like Leon Hall, Ty Law, Marlon Jackson, and they're not even close to that level right now, and it is disappointing, I guess, maybe one positive aspect. And tonight's game is that Wisconsin doesn't play many receivers. They only have really two guys who have produced in Danny Davis and Kendrick Pryor. So I don't think that, uh, or at least Indiana last week, their receiving core was significantly better than Wisconsin's is. So I guess that's one positive. But yeah, there's no question Dax Hill is the best cover guy in that secondary. He's been one of the few bright spots on defense. And in my opinion, he's turned into their best all-around defensive player this year. And of course, the big concern is that Michigan State's receivers weren't, and they still burned Michigan. So, you know, you don't have to be great. And if you have a quarterback that can put the ball on the money, and you, if you've got corners that can't find the ball, and you've got good tight ends, and I think Wisconsin will prove to have that. Everybody's talking about how they can't run the ball this year just because they played one game against Illinois and didn't move the ball very well. We have no idea. Again, one game doesn't mean a damn thing, guys. And maybe in Illinois came to play, and, and maybe they did some things up front. Uh, you know, who knows? But uh, I've got a feeling that Wisconsin's going to move the ball pretty well against Michigan tonight. That's my what my gut tells me. Yeah, and there's no evidence really to think otherwise, to be completely honest. If you've watched uh, all three of Michigan's games, which obviously we all have, um, you know, absolutely no evidence to say that uh, to be confident in saying that Wisconsin's not going to move the football no matter. You know, I don't care that they don't have Jonathan Taylor at running back. I don't care how many guys are really out. Um, Michigan has guys out too. And on top of that, they've been bad this season. I'm really on both sides of the ball at times, but mostly on defense. Um, this would be a positive question. Um, Devin Spencer is wondering, uh, what player will we be talking about tomorrow morning that surprised us with so many players out? Um, I tend to think that it could possibly be somebody on the defensive line just because you're going to see – uh, more new faces there probably than anywhere. Uh, at the same time, I continue to think that we might be talking about Zach Zinter and some of the flashes that he shows um, just because it looks like he's going to get that opportunity to start once again. And, hey, good for him because we've talked about the asterisk season and, you know, you already have the two losses. 
this is going to be a building block. Getting him experience and valuable reps is going to be huge going forward. So I'll go Zach Zinter. I'll say you know, somebody on the defensive line, maybe someone in the interior. If we see Mozzie Smith, I'd like to see him eat up a couple double teams, maybe make a tackle, get in the backfield. Who knows? I'd love to see it, but he'd be out there playing, right, if he was doing that and they thought he was capable. So um, maybe, uh, you know, finding maybe he'll find that gear. Maybe he's a gamer. <laughs> you know, I hate that because if you're not a practice guy, you know, that, the whole gamer thing indicates to me that you're not doing what you need to in practice because if you're doing it in games, you should be able to do it in practice as well. So, uh, But I agree with you on Zinter. I think he's the kind of big physical guy that, uh, you know, that we see at Wisconsin. I hate to say it, but – that's going to be uh, an unbelievable three or four year guy here. Uh, I think he's maybe one of their best linemen already in terms of what he brings to the table. And we'd heard that since he first got here. So uh, maybe a Cornelius Johnson, that's a kid that I wrote about before week one. And I said, okay, this is their big receiver and it's his time to step up. Uh, that's one of the few kids that we talked to after the game that really showed a lot of emotion. You could tell how pissed off he was uh, in his post game interview and didn't really even want to talk. Uh, I think he's got that hunger, and Jim Harbaugh did say he moved up to number two on the depth chart. I think he did that for a reason because I think that Johnson is really starting to come on and uh, to be that big receiver that can really give him something there. Yeah, I like that wide receiver pick. I'm going to say Roman Wilson, the freshman. I think Michigan's passing attack has shown a lot of promise this year and has been one of the few bright spots on the year overall. We saw Wilson catch his first crew touchdown last week. He had 71 yards. Two weeks ago against Michigan State, and again, we don't know a lot about this Wisconsin secondary right now, so assuming Michigan's passing attack keeps progressing and building off what it did last week, I think we could see a receiver or two have a big game and Milton throw potentially for 300 yards again, especially if the running game isn't clicking, which I don't expect it to tonight. Yeah, that Wisconsin defense is tough and physical, man. I'll be stunned. That was I was really surprised at how many people were out there saying, "Oh, they're going to put it, you know, it's going to be 42 to 35 or 35 to 30." And I'm like, "How's Michigan going to get to 30? They can't get to, you know, what they get against 21 against Indiana and 24 against a crappy Michigan State team, and they needed 7 points at the end against a prevent defense to get that." I'm not seeing it especially with a revamped offensive line. I think they'll be lucky to score 20 to 24 points. Yeah, and I've been looking at the scores uh, throughout college football the last couple of weeks because all the attention for Michigan's on the defensive side and all the struggles, and rightfully so. Um, but there's only been a handful of teams the last two weeks that have won games scoring under 25 points. It's just the way college football is. And, I mean, there's not much confidence that Michigan's going to even hit 30 or, you know, there's a good chance they don't hit 24 points against Wisconsin considering, like you said, they didn't do it last week against Indiana. This is a really well-coached defense two weeks in a row that mixes things up, could confuse Joe Milton, and um, we'll see what happens. I kind of predicted that before the Indiana game. Uh, they mixed things up so much that I knew there'd be a couple turnovers, and, and sure enough, there was the back-breaking interception uh, early in the fourth and then the one late. So uh, we'll see what happens there. This is the last question. We'll take Amazing Blue, uh, a quick one, just wondering if there is going to be any – uh, changes on the offensive line outside of, I guess, the two injuries. Chris, do you have any insight on that? Uh, I think that you're going to, there's a possibility that you're going to see a young guy uh, in Chuck Filiaga's spot. And we'll see. It might be Trevor Keegan. I know Nolan Rumler's been itching to play. So these guys have got to earn their opportunities in practice, too. And that's what they need to realize. Uh, Keegan, I think, has or, and, or is getting closer to it. And I think we might see him. I don't know if we'll see him start, but I think you'll see a quicker hook if Filiaga is the guy in there. But, you know, the whole thing about offensive line is chemistry and playing together. And these guys, if you keep rotating them, then you're never going to develop that. And, you know, that's why it's so crucial to find that five that you really like and go with those guys and um obviously when you've got the injuries and both tackles we understand are probably going to be out this again this week Jalen Mayfield and Ryan Hayes so you're plugging again plugging and playing boys and uh that's not a recipe for anything good against a physical big physical program team like Wisconsin I think it could be tough for those guys yeah, maybe I guess it's the recipe for if you are preparing for next season. But like you said, this is a this is a mentality right now for this. But they want to win this game and they understand, you know, the pressure starting to mount. Uh, let's get our final thoughts and then our predictions. We had our staff predictions article uh, up on the site on Friday, but we'll do them here. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Austin Fox. What's your final score? How do you think it's going to play out? I've got Wisconsin winning 31-17. I don't have a lot of confidence in this. 
Michigan team right now, I agree with you guys completely in that. I would be borderline surprised if Michigan scores in the mid-20s or even upper 20s. It's just hard to have any confidence in this team on, honestly, either side of the ball right now. I know we don't know a lot about Wisconsin, but I don't think it'll matter regardless of if Graham Mertz plays or not because uh, this Michigan team has not showed the appropriate fight and the appropriate intensity that you need to have to win games, and that's the most concerning aspect about this team that we've seen over the last two weeks. The only thing I would add to that is there's a huge drop-off from Mertz to Vandenboom or whatever the kid's name is, who was a fringe starter, and that's who they said they expected to play if Mertz didn't. Then, even then, I had Michigan losing, thinking that Vandenboom might be the guy. Uh, isn't that crazy? 24-20 um, to 20 now that it sounds like Mertz is going to play. I'm looking at something like 34-20. to 20. Uh, I think it's going to be that bad. Now, I do want to say that when we – have predicted Michigan down and out in the past. They've usually, you know, come back and turned it around a little bit, but I don't see it from this team, guys. Uh, Michigan has never won as an underdog under Jim Harbaugh, which is unbelievable to me. Um, I, who who would have guessed that we'd be saying that six years into his tenure? Uh, I think that Wisconsin's the better team. I think they're the better program at this point. I hate to say it, but it's a fact. They've got an identity, and I think it's going to be tough sledding for Michigan tonight. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, when we count them out, you know, maybe they'll pop up and play a really good game. Um, I think that we're going to see some more intensity. I think we're going to see a team with the backs against the wall. They're at home for the second time. We didn't see the intensity last time at home. Um, but I think that the message has kind of been out there that this that they've been lacking in that department. They've been lacking in a lot of departments. I think they're going to come out pretty strong. I don't think they have the horses to hang in the end. I'll give Wisconsin uh, the win by 7 or 10. I think I had it 35-28 in our staff predictions. But – uh, we kind of talked about it earlier, and I started to walk back maybe my prediction of Michigan even getting to 28 points. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, check out our postgame coverage at thewolverine.com. Win or lose, uh, you can put in the promo code Nike75. You get a $75 gift card to Nike, and you get 25% off your subscription, a year-long subscription at thewolverine.com. So that's our show. Enjoy the game, everybody. Have a good Saturday.